Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. On this episode, we're going to be going over uh, the fleshing process of a deer cape. Um, if you've been following along with the videos here um, recently, you'll know that we've been in doing the, this is part of the tanning series, and uh, this is just part of the steps of getting the hide ready to be tanned. Um, I just want to invite you, if you haven't subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button and uh, give these videos a like. These videos help my channel out, and uh, if you got any questions, just feel free to shoot me a question or you know here on YouTube uh, in the comments, and I'll get back with you just as soon as I can. Um, I was going to start out this video by um, taking the deer cape over to my fleshing machine and just you know showing y'all how to flesh a hide on a fleshing machine, but I've been getting a lot of questions from from beginner taxidermists, people want to get into it. Um, want to know some of the you know the the how to get started type questions so I thought I would kind of slow down and kind of kind of back up here and just show you how I got started and the, the type of tools I use and explain the process of fleshing without a fleshing machine um, to start off with um, I just I started out with you know you can use a knife and if you've been following along with my videos you'll notice like in the uh, high prep video I just use a knife and I'll remove the fat and the, the meat off of the skin um, Another thing is a pair of scissors. You get you a good pair of scissors. Um, you can take and go around the face, and uh, you can trim a lot of the fat and the membrane stuff off around the eyes and around the nose and the mouth of the of your of your cape. Um, scalpel blades work real good for thinning. Uh, you can use a, they make little small fleshing beams uh, and a little what they call a fleshing ball. You can you know you can use a scalpel blade to do the nose and the nostril area and around the lips. The fleshing ball. I actually I got a. I got a, a old wooden a wooden hammer in here that I kind of use as a fleshing ball. Um, one thing that uh, once you get started, and, and if you don't want to dump a bunch of money in a fleshing machine, um, that, that'll get you going pretty quick. And that's a fleshing beam, and what they call it's a fleshing knife, or some people call them a necker knife. Um, and what you'll do is you'll take this knife here and you'll put it on a beam, and you'll push it down that fleshing beam. And it, as, it, as you push down on it, you're removing the meat and the fat and the membrane from the skin. Now this right here, I started out using the knife and this on a fleshing beam years ago, and uh, this will work. I mean, you can if you want to mount, mount up one of your, you know, a deer for you or one of your buddies or whoever. I mean, you can you can mount. I mounted several deer fleshing with a, a necker knife, a pair of scissors, and a scalpel blade. Um, another th another thing you want to make sure you have, and that's a a, a sharpening steel and maybe like a, a, a wet rock or a, a sharpening stone and uh, some of the carbide sharpeners it's got the little v-groove that you pull the knife through that works real well because you want to make sure you keep a sharp knife a sharp knife makes the process a whole lot more simpler um you're not as apt to cut a hole through it with a sharp knife as you are a dull knife in my opinion um but y'all uh y'all stick around here i just wanted to go over these steps like i said i've had a lot of people ask questions about you know how i get started into this uh uh you know doing it as a hobby or whatever and this is how i got started here many years ago um in the future i may probably try to do a video i, I like my flesh and beams i built my own and uh so in, here in the future i may go in and show you how to build one you can you can go to your uh, local hardware store lumber store lowe's home depot somewhere like that and purchase lumber and you can actually build your own flesh and beam pretty cheap and uh, I, like I said, I, I've used one for years, and then I ended up uh, getting a, a flesh machine later on, and uh, it makes the, it makes the job a whole lot easier and a whole lot quicker. So uh, y'all stick around here. I'm gonna get the cape, this deer cape. And we're gonna move over here to the fleshing machine, and I'm gonna go over and show you how I flesh them out and get them ready for the tanning process. So uh, I'll be right back with y'all. All right, guys, we've got the hide here on our fleshing machine. <clears throat> so. Uh, one thing I like to always do uh, when I start fleshing is you got a fleshing machine you'll need to get you a pair of these sharpening steels right here and uh, these sharpening steels this is what you're going to use to tune your blade and keep your blade sharp what you want to do is open your blade guard up you can see the blade right here we're going to turn it on and I'm just going to run the, run the sharpness steel here on the blade, just kind of sharpen it up a little bit. And it don't take just a minute to uh, put, put an edge on it. Alright, what we're going to start doing is, 
Anytime you flesh a white tail cape or any kind of cape like this, what we're going to do is you want to always want to flesh against the hair. So here's the head of the deer right here, and here's the back end. I'm going to start back here from the shoulders, and I'm going to flesh from the shoulders to the head. you want to do is you want to flash down until you start seeing what they call the blue of the skin. I try, sometimes I try not to go that thin, but you'll, you'll notice the skin will start going from white to like a bluish gray color. That's when you need, you need to stop when you start getting into that. fleshing machine I'm using. This is the Dakota Ford. It's pretty much considered a detail flesher, but I've been fleshing on this thing for years now. I, I, I need to upgrade to a bigger one, but this right here works fine for doing. I've done elk, uh, you know, white tail, bear, cow, sheep. I've done everything on this little machine. I've had, I mean, it's like all machines, you gotta replace the blades at the while because they will wear out. This has been a good little machine over the years. I've got a tub down on this table that catches all the shavings as they come off. So they just kind of, there's a gap in this table. You see right down here, some shavings will drop down through that gap and go down to the tub. And then once that tub gets full, I just dump it out. There you can see the shade that's coming off of that. That's what they look like, the strips. careful when you get down to this brisket area because this is pretty thin down in here. Being careful you'll cut a hole through it so you gotta kind of go easy down this part.
get up past these shoulders and start up in his neck, it really starts going quick. It, uh, you really start covering some ground once you get on this long neck piece here. It's kind of tricky going around the brisket and shoulder area, but once you get straightened out, you can go with it. Sometimes you have to pull this away with your hands and if it starts gathering up around your machine, you want to pull it out and throw it in your tub down here just to keep it cleaned up. machine you want to pull this hide across this guard right here these black guards well you pull it across at an angle and that's what keeps you from cutting a hole through it and you kind of it's kind of a learning process you'll learn over time once you if you ever get one start using it how much pressure you can put on the blade before you cut through I keep my blades kind of set low uh, so I don't take off a whole lot at one time probably about I don't know a sixteenth of an inch, I guess, roughly. It's about the thickness of my what I trim off there. I don't know if you can tell in this video, but there's what it looks like. Up here close to the uh, our Y incision seam and around our ears and around our antler burrs here and uh, this skin right here is really thick so you want to make sure that you thin this down that way you don't have a uh, whole lot of shrinkage once the skin dries on the form so let's get started here and start taking some of this off get you one of, the, one of those fleshing balls or small fleshing bean and what I recommend is to, what I used to do was I would take a scalpel blade and I would th get this real thin right here with a scalpel blade the thinner you get it uh, the better your mouth's going to turn out once like I said once it does dry down on the corn way around go all the way across the top of the head right here these older mature bucks they're gonna be a lot tougher up in this area right here especially between the eyes and the forehead they just over time I guess they just build up a, a thicker skin here than, than like say your younger deer so 
You do after you do two or three of them, you'll you'll kind of see what the difference is between a young deer and an old deer as far as the thickness of the skin in this area. And uh, one thing you want to remember when you uh, when you mount this deer, this forehead is if you get it thin down and uh, get it fleshed all the way out like you know like it needs to be that skin will spread it'll spread out it'll get a lot wider so when you put the put the what i call putting the face on the form you'll think man something's wrong but what you'll have to do is just taxi your skin back into place and get your hair patterns lined up and uh, it'll all go back together it'll just kind of first time you ever first couple times you ever do it it'll just kind of It'll, it'll surprise you how much extra skin you end up with in this area right here. And where I'm talking about is, you can see, here's an eye hole, here's an eye hole. This skin, between these eye holes right here, it'll spread out as you start thinning this down. said I always like to go from the shoulders up when I'm fleshing but when I do this side of the Y incision I'll turn this around because it just makes it easier to run this flesh machine down this seam and get this thin down without uh, cutting a bunch of hair out of it. consuming it's tedious work but the better job you do of getting this hide right here thin down around these eyes the better your mount's going to turn out because you're going to have so much more detail show up in your mount and you're not going to have as much shrinkage due to the fact the skin even though you tan it you're still going to have a little bit of, of shrinkage just from the from the skin drying down on the form there, I don't know if you can tell here in the video, but there's the, the whisker roots in that area. You'll notice it kind of kind of darkens up. You got light skin here all around in a dark spot. That's going to be your, your eyelash roots, your whisker roots.
here, bottom jaw area. And uh, this can here, it's kind of thin, but it's, it's also at the same time, it's pretty tough. So just take your time. Try not to cut no holes through your lip skin here because that's what's going to be tucked up inside your form. And uh, what's bad about if you got a hole there, you can fix it, but it just makes it a little more difficult to tuck it up in that. When you cut that groove in the form, if you use like, uh, if you sew it with needle and thread, or I like to use uh, dryer sheets of super glue, it just makes that skin a little bit thicker and it makes it a little tougher. And you have to uh, put a little more pressure and force to try to get it up inside of there. So if I can, I try not to cut no holes in this area right here. But I've done it. I mean, it's, it's gonna happen. I've been doing this for years. And if I was standing here and tell you that I don't cut no hole in it. I'd cut one in the next time I run across this blade, because it happens. So, if you get into doing this, and uh, you start trying this, you know, get, trying to flesh a hide or whatever, if you cut a hole in it, don't get frustrated at yourself. That's trial and error. I mean, that's, that's how you're going, that's how you learn. You learn from your mistakes. And uh, <laughs> I sure know I've made enough of mine over the years, learning how to do this. Um, but like I said, once you get a few of them under your belt, even if you don't want them, if you're not going to mount a deer, if you you know if you got a doe or a, some kind of little old scrub buck or something that you don't want to mount, just skin that deer out and practice fleshing the hide on it. The more of them you do, the better you're going to get at it, and the faster you're going to get at it. I mean, I still even, which kind of making these videos, it, I've done learn it, it takes me a little longer doing it because I'm having to deal with these cameras, but. Even on a good day, it still takes me 45 minutes to an hour to flesh one out and get it where I want it. You know, get the hide thin down like I want it, even on this fleshing machine. Uh, and I'm sure there's people out there that can blow through them and do them a whole lot faster, but that's just the way it is. I, I guess some people, you know, you, you get, I, you don't want to, you don't want to spend too much time in one spot on these things, but like I said, you want to make sure you get all this meat and stuff cleaned that up and all the membrane and you just don't want to cut them full of holes. So. And right here on this chin, there's a whole lot of whiskers right in this area. And you'll run into these whisker butts. I try to I try to flesh down into them, but try not to completely cut them off. You, I mean, you can see them. Like I'm running, I can feel them because I run this across this blade right now. And I can feel, I can feel them kind of, you know, cutting down. One thing you want to do is, like I said, is make sure you try to, try to thin this lip skin up. Get it, the thinner you get it, the easier it is to tuck in the form. Once you once you tan this, you're gonna cut a lot of this lip skin off. I always I don't cut it off till I get ready to mount the deer, and I'm you know I do get pretty much doing the the prep work, get ready to mount. Then I'll then I'll go in and trim this up and get to the length I want it. It's not gonna hurt a thing running this through your tan with this lip skin on here. Like I said, just make sure you get this thin down just as thin as you can. Cause it's gonna it's gonna make your mount turn out a whole lot better in the long run. Right, I'm gonna switch over here now and do the other eye. I kind of work my way around the face as I'm going. And I'll, I'll work my way back and forth so I get it like I want it.
fleshed out here around the face now, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go back around and just see if I've got any spots that I missed. Uh, kind of go over and just clean it up. See any big spots, I'll thin them down. forehead area here it's pretty thick so I usually go back and try to kind of thin it down a little bit. That's one good thing about the Dakota 4. They call it a, kind of like a detail flasher, but I mean, you can do a lot of detail work, but you can see, I mean, you can do a whole deer with it. Like I said, I've done elk. I've done a big, you know, bull elk on them before. So, if you're just starting out, this machine's pretty cheap. That's how I ended up buying it. It's years ago when I decided I wanted a flash machine, I bought this one, and I just, I never have upgraded anything else. Um, there's several different fleshing machines out there on the market uh, and I'm not no expert at fleshing so I couldn't tell you which ones are the best but this one here is the only one I ever use. I do know that uh, they make a pro version they make a Dakota 5 which is commercial it looks it's, it's brown powder coat just like this one and they make the what I guess what they call the pro version and uh, it's aluminum and I think stainless steel and uh, if I ever upgrade one, that's probably be the one I upgrade to. Like I said, there's several of them out there. So you just kind of, if you're in the market of one, you can get on YouTube and just look up fleshing machines. And some, there's a lot of guys out there. Like I said, they they uh, they know more about them than I do, so they can they can recommend. And you know, everybody's got their own opinions too. They're all going. I mean, you can. You can ask five different people, depending on what their preference is, they're gonna tell you five different machines anyway, so. But like I said, those guys, they'll steer you in the right direction. The ones that's been doing it for a while. All right, that's gonna do it here now. Uh, for the fleshing video. So I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna take this and put it back in the pickle and uh, I'll pickle it for another 24 hours and then I'll neutralize and go on the tanning process. All right, guys, we got the hide flesh now. Uh, what I did was before I, you know, cut the machine off and switched the camera around, I went over the hide and made sure I didn't have no thick spots. Uh, everything, you want everything uniform on the skin. So when you lay it on there, you know, you don't have no unevenness to it. Um, what we're gonna do now is we'll take it and uh, we'll put it back in the pickle for another 24 hours and that will help draw out any more of the uh, proteins and stuff, the non-tannables. And uh, once we let it uh, pickle for another 24 hours, we're going to pull it out and uh, we're going to mix up our neutralizing solution and uh, we'll neutralize the hide and uh, once we get it neutralized, we'll rinse it and then we'll bring it in here and we'll put the tan on it and tan it. Um, this is going to be the end of the fleshing video. Um, I'm going to stop this video here and I'll do another one uh, showing the tanning process. So uh, I'm going to take this hot air and put it in a pickle. Uh, I just want to say, if you haven't subscribed, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Make sure you hit the like. The like helps out my channel. Um, hit the notification bell. It'll notify you whenever I got new content available here on the channel. And as always, thanks for watching and God bless.